Arad Kostanian, thank you very much for being on Serviana Analysis. Uh, we have been following together the recent escalation on the borders between uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, or better known as Artsakh, by the Armenians, and uh, with Azerbaijan. Uh, it seems that after a week of the uh, ongoing battles, uh, that there is no near ending for this conflict. In your opinion, what is the main goal of Azerbaijan in escalating the situation or launching a full-scale war on, uh, on the Armenian, uh, Armenians of Artsakh? Thank you for your invitation, Kevin. Uh, well, I believe we have to look at this uh, situation, not only Azerbaijani aggression per se, but here I believe mostly it comes by Turkey's uh, not only diplomatic support, but Turkey has to solve some uh, some problems here. If you if you take uh, if you take into consideration what uh, Turkey has lost its uh, to bring its ambition in uh, Syria, although they have uh, their militarily uh, they are there and in Idlib they have uh, the they are there supporting the. Uh, Akfiris mm -hmm. and other small groups combined there, but uh, I believe that Turkey lost this uh, create the, the the dream of creating Ottoman Empire in uh, in Middle East, and especially when they started to lose their uh, grounds in Libya and then to lose their strategy in Libya. So I believe Turkey is transferring this so-called pan-Turkish, pan-Islamist ambition this time to South Caucasus because we have to know clearly that this battle already is not between Azerbaijan and Artsakh mm -hmm. or Azerbaijan, uh, Azerbaijanis and Armenians per se, but here there is the big role of Iran and Russia. And of course, these two powers together, they uh, started to bring Turkey on its knees in terms of creating Ottomanis and uh, Muslim Brotherhood powers in Syria and in Libya. Uh, I believe that they tried to transfer this uh, hope, their last hope to South Caucasus because they knowingly they know that Azerbaijan, they are same Turks, only the difference is between uh, the, re the religious sects are and this is very important this is point, Ararat. This is very important point. Yes. I, re I received a question on Syriana analysis asking me, uh, like the majority of Azerbaijani people are Shia, and uh, but they're fighting alongside Turkey, which Turkey itself is uh, has an ideological. The current Turkey has an ideological uh, ruling system that is very hostile towards the Shiites and other minorities in the region. So why, why the Azerbaijanis uh, feel like more Turkish, like they're like more Turkish, or feel like they're closer to Turkey than to Iran, which is a Shiite state? <clears throat> Actually, that's 
strategic point is to reach to Central Asia and East Asia. This is the uh, very famous pan-Turkic mm -hmm. uh, scenario that we Armenians know it very well because we have dealt with it in our, all our lives. But many people, they didn't know about this. And some people thought that we are Armenians are exaggerating this through all years because we lost our uh, Western Armenia. We have been uh, victims of genocides. And we are creating some uh, scenario exaggerating Turkey's ambitions. But now it's everything clear. Everything is on table. Everything is on ground. Arad, I want to ask, so, okay. ask you this yes. uh, because uh, you mentioned Iran. Uh, yesterday I was uh, live on Mayadin TV and I mentioned that uh, Iran will not tolerate creating a terrorist uh, hotspot on its northern borders uh, where Turkey is transferring, uh, already transferred around 4,000 mercenaries from the so-called Free Syrian Army who were like uh, praised in the last 10 years and were called moderate rebels by Western governments and even the media. Uh, and I said if Iran feels uh, that it is, its, its security is threatened, uh, then uh, Iran will intervene in this conflict because until now, Iran is only talking diplomatically and asking both sides to resolve their differences in, on, in diplomatic ways. But do you agree with me that if Iran feels like it, Turkey established a terrorist hotspot on its northern borders, and we know that these mercenaries, they hate Iran with passion, and um, so do you think Iran will intervene militarily, like I'm not saying directly, maybe uh, intelligence cooperation with the Armenians or maybe some airstrikes against these mercenaries in, uh, in the southern borders, for example, of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh? You mentioned right, and yesterday uh, I read on uh, our national newspaper in Armenia that Iranian, of, Iranian high official has announced that we cannot tolerate the entrance of Takfiris uh, in our region. And moreover, Iran also, Iran, Iran's troops uh, are also on the border ready. So I'm sure that if that process escalates more, because why I'm saying more, because we've heard that another group is supposed to come from Afrin area. And there is also uh, it's not officially uh, stated, but they, we have here uh, on newspapers and some ru rumors that uh, some Pakistan is also uh, ready to come and fight for this jihad. I mean, you know, whether it's rumors or not, we have seen this scenario in Syria. You know very well, I know very well. It started with Free Syrian Army and very quickly it turned, it turned into international jihadic spot. And that's why, that's why we have to be uh, very actively working with Iran and uh, Russia and China on this, because we don't know. We know that in Syria some Uyghur fighters were there, and we don't know this uh, they, they are here, they are around five thousand fighters from the Uyghurs in Syria. Arabat. The number of the Uyghur fighters are five thousand. With their families, yes. they are like twenty thousand. I know, but we don't know if if there are some who came to uh, fight to Artsakh. That's what I mean. We don't know if there are some Uyghurs inside. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that these are not only Syrians, they are announcing Syrians, but we know the, the mix of collection of that uh, Takfiri groups. I won't groups. be surprised. They, they might be even Saudis, even can be Saudis, even mm -hmm. can be Pakistanis. But you know why, why, we are, we, why we should be very careful about this and work from now on that, not to work that, uh, in, uh, let's say, in, uh, of course, this war is not, not the last very long. Mm -hmm. Will not last for months. We know that we should for we should we, we are sure about that. But you know, you can just wake up and see that if there are four thousand, maybe there will be twenty thousand. That's why that's why we have to be very cautious and work out that before the danger comes here.